this is Anu and welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to be back after one month of break and I missed you guys so much. So happy to be back today with this tutorial which is a very easy to make kimono vest. Here it is right there. I'll style it with like that but of course you can style it the way you want. I like the fact that it is a little oversized. Uh, you can make it smaller if you want, it's not too tight. This kimono is like wearing a big cuddle or a big hug so I absolutely love it. So it was very important to me to begin this new year easing in the crochet world, showing you again that creating something super cute and super stylish doesn't necessarily need to be complicated. So it's a kimono vest. I use very simple material that are not expensive. I used four skins. I will put how much it costs right there to uh, create that kimono vest with the same exact yarn I used and I will put all the information of course about the yarn I use in the info box as usual and yeah so the stitch that I just discovered that I didn't know actually it's a new stitch for me it's, it's called in French the petit pois stitch which is pea pod and you'll understand why it looks like little pea pods little pea pods like neatly arranged right next to the other so super simple and that kimono vest is basically a new way of creating sleeves that is not intimidating, that is really easy. They're kind of like bad sleeves, but not quite. And, and the vest is just almost created in one piece and assembled super easily again. So yes, I cannot wait to show you how to create it. So if you are not subscribed to my channel, don't hesitate to do so. It is totally free. I would love for you to join my crochet family. So don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button and also don't hesitate to click on that little bell next to it and then you will be notified every time I post something new. I will continue to post one tutorial per week as much as I can, sometimes yarn reviews, you know, continuing what we had for the past two years. I think uh, it, it has been amazing and we have a good recipe here. Please continue to inspire me and in the comment box today or in my next tutorial and my next video, don't hesitate to let me know what you would like me to create for you. It is a dialogue between me and you. And as I said, you inspire me to create amazing things. And it is very important for me to have your input on what to do next. Also, don't hesitate to check me on all my social media. I will put it somewhere here in the screen. I will also put substitution for the yarn I used today if you live outside the United States and you can f not find the exact yarn then I will give you other options. You know that fall is my favorite season so I am so excited to ease into the fall and create fallish style tutorials for you. As usual other sizes will be on my blog. I'll put the address to my blog right here and I will have bigger sizes uh, there as soon as possible. Give me a few days as usual. And to celebrate the beginning of the year, I decided to give one of you the yarn to create today's tutorial. So it's four skins of a yarn that will go your way. The only thing you need to do to enter this giveaway and to have the possibility to win the yarn is to comment in the comment box down below. So easy, right? And that is it. If you are interested in knowing how to create this adorable oversized kimono vest, then keep on watching. And in the meantime, happy crochet and see you next time. Bye. For this tutorial, you will need four skins of yarn from the brand Threads and Loops. The name of the yarn is Impeccable. There's about 120 grams in each skin and you will need four skins of that. You will also need two crochet hooks, one six millimeters and one six and a half millimeters, some scissors and a tapestry needle. You will take your crochet hook and your yarn, make a slip knot and you will begin to chain. For my size, which is small medium, I chained 60 for the base. We are doing the back first. So this is the base for the back, which will sit right below your waist. And for me, it's 60 chains. I will meet you once I have 60 chains. I 
Here you go, you have your chin right here. This is what it will look like. And you're going to go into the third chain from your hook and you're going to make a double crochet. And then go to the next chain and make a double crochet. And you're going to make a double crochet in each chain. You will have 57 double crochet in total at the end of your first row. And I will meet you at the end of your first row. And this is what your work will look like at the end of your first row. We have created your little bottom border. You're going to chain two and turn your work around. Alright, so now time to create our petit pois pea pod stitch. Super easy. You're going to pass your crochet hook through the first stitch right there, yarn over and back. You will have two loops on your crochet hook. Then you're going to go to the next stitch, pass your crochet hook through the stitch, yarn over and back, and you will have three loops on your crochet hook. Then you are going to yarn over through all the loops on your crochet hook. Super easy, right? All right, the important thing is for your next stitch, not to go to the next stitch, but to go to the same stitch you just finished in, right there. You're going to pass your crochet hook through that stitch, yarn over and back, you have two loops on your crochet hook. Then you go to the next stitch, pass your crochet hook, yarn over and back through the loop, you have three loops on your crochet hook, yarn over and through all the stitches. And that is basically it. But super important not to go to the next stitch when you begin your next petit pois. You go to the last stitch you just finished in, pass your crochet hook through that last stitch, yarn over and back, two loops, next stitch, pass your crochet hook, yarn over and back, three loops, yarn over through all the loops on your crochet hook. And this is it my friends, that's what you're going to do for the rest of your row. And can you see those little pea pods forming there? It's the beginning, you don't see them so well, but believe me, you'll see them. And that is so easy. So I will meet you at the end of your second row, once you are done with your row of petit pois. All right, you are done now with your second row, and now for the third row. And the third row is really repeating the second row. And this is basically what you are going to do until row 43. So we're creating the back, going to be 41 more rows of petit pois. And this is how you end your row. Make sure that you end in the very last stitch of your row or, or else you will decrease, you will lose a stitch every row. So just to make sure at the beginning, just count that you have 57 stitches at the end of your row. So just get into the habit to at the end of each row count that you have the same amount of stitches you began with. In our case right now it's 57 stitches. So we are at the end of our second row and the third row will be exactly the same except that you are going to take the crochet hook that is slightly bigger. So leave your six millimeter crochet hook to the side and take your six and a half millimeter crochet hook. Chain two, turn your work around and begin your third row in the first stitch, exactly the same way we began our second row. And you will continue like that, back and forth, back and forth, and I will meet you at the end of our 43rd row.
And look at that. Now you can clearly see why it is called the pea pod stitch, petit pois in French. Even the color matches since I chose that army green. But anyway, so this is what your work will look like and you have made 43 rows of that stitch. By now you should be an expert on the petit pois stitch. I really like the way it looks. It's very cute. So now I'll show you how to create the bat sleeve. And that is another new technique. I know that sleeves can be intimidating sometimes and I just wanted to show you an easy way to create sleeves. And I really like that technique because it's fairly easy. All right, so what you're going to do now is chain two. And two more. So you have chained four and then you turn your work around and in the third chain from your hook, you are going to begin to create a petit pois stitch. So you pass your crochet hook through that chain, yarn over and back, you have two loops, go to the next chain, pass your crochet hook, yarn over and back, you have three loops on your crochet hook, Yarn over and through all the loops. And repeat in that same stitch you just finished, continue with your petit pois. Petit pois. And since we chained four, we use the chain two to begin your row and we added two petit pois stitches. So right now you have 59 stitches in total. Now you're going to continue for your 44th row and you are going to continue in petit pois until the end of your row as usual. We are slightly increasing to create that gentle slope for your sleeves. All right, I'll meet you at the end of your 44th row. All right, so when you reach the end of your 44th row, what you're going to do is chain four. Turn your work around. And let's tackle the 45th row and you will repeat exactly what you did for the 44th row because we are mirroring the other sleeve so you did one side sleeve now you're doing the other side sleeve so again in the third stitch from your hook you're going to begin your first pea pod stitch and you're going to continue so now you have added two more stitches so in total you will have 61 stitches for this 45th row and here we are at the end of your 45th row. You're going to make sure you finish that row, making a stitch, a pea pod stitch in the last stitches, going all the way to the last stitch. And make sure to count that you have 61 stitches in total. Done with the 45th row. we are going to go and do the 46 one. We are going to continue to increase. This time we are going to increase by one, so you're going to chain three. And turn your work around. And in the third chain from your hook again, Begin with the pea pod stitch. So now you have 62 stitches in total and I will meet you at the end of your 46th row where we are going to add another stitch. So here we are at the end of your 46th row, chain three, and turn your work around. And you're going to repeat the 46th row for your 47. So 47th row, you're going to have 63 stitches in total. In the third chain from your hook, begin your pea pot stitches. And I will meet you at the end of your 47th row. All right, so now we are going to do the 48th row. And for row 48, we are going to chain four. 
which means that we are going to add two stitches so you will have 65 stitches at the end of your 48th row repeating again in the third chain from the hook beginning your pea pod and I will meet you at the end of this row row 48 we have 65 stitches in total We are at the end of your row 48. We're going to tackle the row 49, which we're going to add two stitches by, oops, you see I didn't finish my row properly. Forgot the last stitch, here we go. All right, so we're going to chain four, which means that we are going to add two more stitches. We will have 67 stitches at the end of your row 49. And again, in the third, chain from the hook begin with your peapod stitch adding two stitches and I will meet you at the end of row 49 we are at row 50 and at row 50 we're going to do a big increase you're going to chain seven we're going to add seven stitches And then you're going to add two more stitches. So you will have chain nine and turn your work around. But you have nine chains in total. And then in the third chain from the hook, you begin to do your peapod stitches, adding seven stitches in total. So for this 50th row, you will have 74 stitches in total. Make sure not to twist your work as you go along those seven chains. All right, I will meet you at the end of your row 50. And you're going to add seven stitches again, matching one sleeve to the next. So here you are, chaining nine again, and then turning your work around for your 51st row. And again, doing the petit pois in the third chain from your hook. At the end of your 51st row, you will have 81 stitches in total. And I will meet you at the end of row 51. Yikes, one of my hair. Does it happen to you too? I get my hair tangled in all my crochet work. <laughs> my DNA is everywhere. So now the increasing is done on both sides. You are at your row I will meet you at the end of your row 51 and for row 52 for a bunch of rows you're just going to go back and forth back and forth working on these 81 stitches that we have in the petit pois stitch and you are going to continue like that back and forth back and forth until the end of your 65th row and I will meet you at the end of your 65th row working on those 81 stitches all right so so far we have created the back of our kimono vest and we are at row 66 you have worked your back and the half of your sleeve so the back part of your sleeve this is where you are at now and now it is time to begin to work on the front panel and super easy for that so uh, now you have been working on 81 stitches and from now on from the front panel you will only work on 35 stitches you are at the half part of your sleeve so you will continue for a few rows to do the sleeve working on those 35 stitches and creating the front panel leaving at the same time a empty space for the collar and then later you will work on the other side of the front panel but of course I will take you through it slowly but surely no worries so let's continue all right so now you are at your row 66 and what you're going to do is create the front 
side of your work and at the same time the color super super easy while continuing to do our um, sleeve all right so you're going to chain two and turn your work around you're at row 66 you're basically done with half of your sleeve And you're going to begin regularly making your petit pois stitch. For this row 66, you are going to make your petit pois stitch regularly, but only working on 35 stitches. So you're going to have 35 stitches. And once you are done making your petit pois in that, you are going to turn around. You're not going to go all the way through the 81 stitches. 35 stitches you're going to end that row 66 and you're going to chain two and turn your work around so that means that on the other side you will have 35 stitches left to do the other front panel and then in the middle you will leave 11 stitches untouched for the color but right now we're working on 35 stitches so now we are going to work on the front side panel of your work so we're going to turn around and this is going to be your row 67 so chain two turn your work around and do a row of petit pois stitch i will meet you at the end of your 67th row I am done with my 67th row and for row 68, chain 2, turn your work around and I will continue like that, back and forth, back and forth, working on those 35 stitches until I reach row 81. I will meet you at the end of row 81. Alright, so now you are at your row 82 and you still have 35 stitches that you're working on and time to decrease now creating the opposite side of your bat sleeve so what you're going to do is you're going to crochet your 82nd row as usual so here is your 82nd row you should begin your 82nd row on the side of the collar right there and you're going to do your row as usual but you're going to stop a little early to begin to create the decrease but let me show you more in detail how to do it so chain two and then turn your work around and when you reach the end of your row so it should be opposite to the collar on the side of your sleeve you're going to let the seven the last seven stitches be so before if you count one two three four five six seven and once you have seven stitches left you're going to just turn around so you basically work on 28 stitches for that 82nd row and for your 83rd row you're going to chain two turn your work around and work regularly in petit pois for 28 stitches and i will meet you at the end of your row So you remember we had increased on one side of the sleeve and now we are decreasing working this sweater in one piece and creating the sleeves at the same time. And what we will do for row 84 is going back so chaining two and turning your work around and then instead of leaving the seven stitches on touch we're just going to stop and leave two stitches on touch and turn around so we will have 26 stitches in total to work on Alright, so here I am at the end of my 84th row. I'm leaving the two last stitches untouched, turning my work around and chain two and ready for row 85. And for row 85, I am going to do my petit pois stitches, working on 26 stitches in total. And I will meet you at the end of row 85.
And here you go, here is the beautiful decrease mirroring the increase that we did before. So we're mirroring the increase that we did at the beginning of our bad sleeve and now we are, instead of increasing, we are decreasing. So you should be able to put the sleeve folded in half and match one side to the next. And it should be exactly matchy matchy. So this is the cool part about creating this bat sleeve vest, is that it is almost all crocheted in one piece. There's very little assembly required. You're creating the back and the collar and the sleeve and the front all together. Right now we are on the front panel. We finished with the sleeve basically for one side and we're going to go back and forth, back and forth, working on these 26 stitches of ours and for a number of uh, rows until we match the back length of our sweater. And I will tell you exactly right now how many rows you need to do until you reach the end of your front panel and it will be time to do the last row which will be a row of double crochet. So here I laid my work flat for you in front of me so you can see what we have done. We have done the back in one piece and then we continued with the beginning of the sleeves increasing on both sides and then we worked only on half of the stitches to create the front panel leaving a space for the other front panel and in the middle for the color then we decreased to create the other side of the sleeve and then now we created the front panel just going back and forth back and forth working on these 26 stitches you are going to make 42 rows right now or just back and forth back and forth working on those 26 stitch so i will meet you in 42 rows when it will be time to do the last row of double crochet. You can fold your work in half to figure out how many rows you need for the back to match the front. Once you have reached the same length and you're ready to make your last row, you're going to chain two, turn your work around, switch to the smaller crochet hook again, the six millimeter, so from the 6.5 to the six, and you're going to make a double crochet in each and every stitch. And this will be your last row of your front panel. And now it is time to fasten off and you're done with one front side. Now you're going to have to recreate exactly the opposite on the other side to create the second front panel. All right, so this is what your work will look like once you fold it in half. You see how we're done with the back and then one front side panel. And um, now we are going to do the same on the other side. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to leave 11 stitches untouched in the middle and then we are going to take your crochet hook and join and we're going to repeat exactly the same process from row to row but on the other side. I am going to uh, grab my bigger crochet hook, the 6.5 millimeter again and I am going to count from the front side panel that I just finished, I'm going to count 11 stitches and I'm going to make leave those 11 stitches on touch and at the 12th stitch I am going to pass my crochet hook and join with my yarn. Here I am joining and chaining two and that will be the beginning of the second panel and I'm going to begin my petit pois stitches back and forth back and forth repeating exactly what we have done so far on white side one side panel to the next and I will meet you at the end of your second front side panel. And when you're done with your second front side panel, this is what your work will look like. So here we are and now it is time to assemble. And we're going to assemble the side 
both of the sides of our work. So what is left for us to do is sew in all the loose tails in the back of your work and now begin to assemble. We're going to begin to assemble the sides first and you know me I like to assemble it with my crochet hook so I'm going to slip stitch through both of the front and the back uh, side together. I'll show you how I do it quickly. I am going to of course put the two sides snug together. If you're not comfortable just freestyling assembling like that you can of course take pins and kind of pin those two sides together so you know that you are uh, assembling it correctly. I just freestyle it because just that's the way I do it. That's the way I roll. So you take your crochet hook, your smaller crochet hook, the 6mm, you pass your crochet hook through both of the sides, uh, the front and the back, and you yarn over and back through both of the sides. And then you match stitch to stitch, and that's what you're going to do. Pass your crochet hook through both of the sides, matching the stitches together, and then yarn over and through all the loops on your crochet hook. And you're going to go up the side of your front and back going like that all up until you reach the part of the sleeve where you begin to increase and decrease so the bottom part of your bat sleeve I'll meet you there Alright, sorry about the lighting, it's different, it's night now. <laughs> but I finished assembling the side, here you go. So this is the back of your work. And I assembled until I reach the bottom of my sleeve, where I begin to increase, right there. Now the next step is going to be making a border around your sleeve. It's a border made out of double crochet, super easy again, but you have the wrong side of your work facing you. You need to put your sweater back on the right side and once you have your sweater back on the right side, grab that crochet hook again, the six millimeter, and I'll show you how to, without fastening off, switching from assembling the side to making the border for your sleeve. All right, so put your work right side facing you and you are going to chain three and that will count as your first double crochet. Then what you're going to do next is pick up one double crochet per row. So a quick way to see where you have a row is because of the nature of the petit pois stitch, you're coming from the side, so you're going to have one little petit pois stitching up, out, you're going to have a ridge stitching out, that's one row, and then you are going to have a little valley in between, and that's the second row. So you're making a double crochet on top of the ridge and a double crochet in that little valley indentation. And you're going to go up the side of your sleeve. For me, I had 21 double crochets picking up from the beginning of the bottom of my sleeve until I reach the upper part of my sleeve. And you know you've reached the upper part of your sleeve because you're reaching a corner. So you're picking up stitches going up until you reach that corner stitch. As I said, I had 21 double crochets going up. And then you reach the top of your sleeve and you're going to just pick again one double crochet per row, picking up stitches at the top of your sleeve. And again a one double crochet per row, one on top of the ridge, one in the indentation, one in the little valley in between until you reach the second corner. All right here is your work. And once you reach that second corner, you're going to repeat more of the same. You're going to mirror the other side going down and on the other side of the sleeve and picking up 21 double crochets.
Once you are done with those 21 uh, double crochet going down on the other side of the sleeve, you're going to join with the first chain two you had created at the beginning of that double crochet border. And then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to fasten off. And what you're going to do now is repeat exactly the same thing for the other sleeve. And the way we're going to assemble the sleeve now is to put back your work on the wrong side again and again with your crochet hook assembling the bottom part of the sleeve together leaving the sleeve opening on touch and assembling it to the bottom all along the bottom of the sleeve. Repeat to the other side. All right, so now we are done with our sleeve. This is what your work will look like. And what we're going to create now is a little border that goes in the side of the front panel. Remember your front panels were smaller than your back. If you divide it in half, we had 35 stitches on each side of the back, 26 in the front. So now we're going to fill this gap by creating a really nice border. You're going to take your crochet hook, your six millimeter, the smaller one, and we are going to pass your crochet hook at the bottom side of your panel of your front panel with the front of your work facing you sorry about the little little peter patter of my pets they're keeping me company right now <laughs> and they're noisy all right so you're taking your crochet hook passing it through joining and then you're going to chain two and you're going to pick up double crochet all along the side of your panel and we're going to do it exactly the same way as we did for the sleeves and by that I mean picking it up on the top of the uh, ridge and then in the little valley in between the ridge and that will give you one double crochet per row just doing it like that and we're going to go all the way up to the top until you reach the collar Once you reach your collar and you have those 11 stitches that you left alone in the middle, you're going to turn around, chain two, and do a second row of double crochet. Super easy, that second row of, of your border is just making a double crochet on top of the double crochet from the previous row. And you're going to repeat this until you have four rows of double crochet and then you're going to fasten off and repeat on the other side and this is what your work will look like so here you have the sleeve you have the border we created and what you're going to do now is the upper part of your border that is loose there you're going to take a tapestry needle and you're going to sew it to the 11 stitches that were left alone at your collar. Super easy and they will meet in the middle. And just like that you will create the collar. Can you hear my cat hissing at my dog? It's like a love-hate relationship. Here you go, I'm showing you quickly how I sew the border to the collar. Super easy with my tapestry needle. You could do it with your crochet hook, but I wanted it to be really flat and seamless. And of course I did that on the wrong side of my work and then I turned it back to the right side. And voila, this is the last finishing touch. When you are done with your collar, you are done with your vest. What did you think? I really think it came out gorgeous. I think it came out casual and lovely and perfect for the beginning of the fall. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial as much as I have enjoyed coming back and creating this for you. I'm so looking forward to many more 
Don't hesitate to give me ideas here in the comment box or on Facebook to what you would like me to make next. I love to read your comments and I do listen to your comments and you inspire me, remember? So anyway, in the meantime, love you and until next time, happy crochet. Bye. And voila, go to the middle. That's not the middle. Why don't you just meet me in the middle? Here it is, here. Here it is, like here it is. So don't hesitate to hit the, sub the, the yeah. tutorial, tutorial in Fuba in the screen. Ah, itchy. Um, cannot find this specific. Ce que je dis encore en général. And um, send it back, blue blah, blue blah. Create this tuto tutorial. Oh my gosh. <laughs>